suffering from mental health issues in the future, it just will, you know, it will affect your level of education, of how much you will be involved in the new society, your ability to go back and rebuild your country. No one wants to stay in the U.S. or in Europe. Look at the refugees for now, the Palestinians, for after 70 years, they still need to go, want to go back. No one want to stay away from home. How would you compare the way children are seen when they come rolling ashore in the Greek islands from across the Mediterranean? It's difficult because um, you have to be there so, um, to, to, to really feel it. Um, they don't cry. Uh, most of the people think that they cry. Um, if they are crying, like there is children for sure that they are crying, but they are the good, like, and there's the minority, the majority don't cry. They cry all the way and then they stop. Uh, because crying is an alarm for the environment, for the adults, for the parents, that there's something wrong. And when the alarm's not working, you know, the alarm just stops. And they use more, uh, you know, strong defense mechanism of, of just split and just be, you know, just the body and the soul and the mind just go around beside and, and there is no connection. And, and this is the, the, the core of, of developing of a post-traumatic stress disorder in the future, when you're just dealing with the body and there is no mind anymore in the shore. What would a clinical setting be like if you were going to treat a child? You need to be there for him. I think uh, being is the, um, is, the, is the most important thing in, in uh, working with children, being with him in the room um, uh, as a human being, as a therapist, to give him the space where he can express himself. Because um, I believe that children, all children born okay, we, the adults, just make something bad for them that make them not okay. So the therapist fir first thing need to be that good model of, of you know, of a, a, a caring adult that will be there for him in the room. When you're dealing with a young child who already has this complex collection of problems, where do you begin? Can you create a, a hierarchy of problems? What do you s try to work on first? First about the community. I think, um, in the refugee crisis, uh, especially come to Europe and to the West, to the US and Australia, um, we are dealing with refugees coming from the Middle East, Africa, Afghanistan, Pakistan. We are talking about a total different uh, culture, which is a culture that built on uh, the collectivism. It's not about the individual. And the, the power of the community is, is, is so strong that can really heal people. So the first thing we need to do is to create the community again. And then we need to start working with the people. But the, the Western approach of psychology, that it's based on you know, the individual well-being, doesn't work for refugees. We need to address them as a group. We need not just to be sensitive to their uh, culture and mentality. We need to be competent for this. We need to work through their mentality, not against it. I agree that we need to empower women, but is it the right place to do it on the shore or in the, in the transit camp when the alpha male that, you know, um, was ruling all his life now lost everything and now you are empowering his woman and leaving him aside because he's so violent and aggressive? He's not violent and aggressive. This is how depression in the East, we, I'm coming from there, we take it out. We don't do an uh, internalization process when we are depressed. We don't sit and say, oh God, what happened to me? No, we become aggressive. We become a little bit of, uh, you know, agitated. This is, this is how depression in the East is. So we neglect the men and we focus on the woman, for example, and this is how domestic violence just start to raise inside the, inside the camps. What, what I'm saying all the time, what drives me crazy, these people who just cross seas and mountains and fight ISIS and Bashar and regimes and, and smugglers and Turks and whatever, name it. When they arrive to Greece, what the first thing we say to them? Oh, you are weak. 
you are refugees. Oh, please, go come here. I am the white man with the keys for everything. I will take care of you. We don't celebrate the strength of the refugees. So actually, we are part of the problem. It's not because we are, you know, bad people. It's just because we don't understand the difference. And in, in, the, in the camps that are inside Syria or in even Turkey or in Jordan, it's totally different because it's the same community. There is no threat for my culture. There is no threat for my religion. I don't feel that I am starting a new fight now. So it's more easy for them to start their life again. So what would that, uh, ideally, what would that look like? How would that work? If you could, you know, arrive at one of these places and say, here I am. I want to set up a system that's going to work, that's culturally relevant, that meets the needs of people who are not going to drop in voluntarily. What would it look like? I did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us what you did. It's called the inverted pyramid. The inverted pyramid is when you arrive to a camp where there's no referral system for mental health and you start with the community. We, you start with, with everyone. First, let's build the community. Let's have elections so you can have represent yourself. Let's see what's your right. Let's do, uh, if you are a teacher, you can teach. If you are a, you know, a hair artist, please open a store. Let's create the community because the community can heal itself, especially, especially for people who are coming from the East from a, a, a culture that is about and based on the collective well-being. And when you create the community and the community start functioning by, you know, doing, bringing food, for example, it's much easier and it's much also, you know, I can, f it's photographed well if I bring pizza for everyone. You know, maybe the funds will like it and give, oh, he feeds 1,000 people. But no, if I bring thyme and olive oil and, and za'atar and I bring it to the camp and make the people make their food. They can come together, they will celebrate, the smell has a power. So all these community activities, creating the community again, the, the together, it can heal a lot, a lot of the problems. And we saw that with three to four professionals and a group of trained volunteers, you can give a full service of mental health support to 500 people in one camp, for example, in Dievata and Saloniki in 2016. So it's not about that there is not enough. It's about that there is no referral system. And this referral system, when we create it, it needs to be culturally adapted to the people. Right now, today, there are millions of people in camps in the region. Lebanon, the, the population of Lebanon has grown by like 40% just from refugees. When those people go home, what kind of help are they going to need then? Is it going to change? Are they going to need different sort of mental health services to be resettled? To make people go back, you, you need them to be strong. You know, um, I think one of the, the major obstacles of refugees is dealing with the, um, you know, the state of mind of being a refugee. Now camps is open, but they, we teach them, the system teach them to wait for the fish, not go and fish. They, we don't celebrate their strength, so let's celebrate their strength. France won the World Cup with almost 80% of refugees and immigrants in their national team. And I think diversity can make us just more beautiful and more, you know, um, more human. Um, and, and, and this is what, what, what we need to achieve, to celebrate the strength of these people and to celebrate the diversity, not the opposite.